guys and welcome back to my channel. So uh, as you can see I'm not alone today and it seems like I'm in the middle of a project. That's because I am. I actually <laughs> went ahead and made the pattern already and or not finished but like made this mock-up right here. The sleeves are right in front of me and we're gonna do that as well. Yeah there is a lot going on at the moment and I want to finish this video in time which is why I skip the whole pattern making part but at some point maybe if you want me to I can show you what I did it like it's not that much it's a cocktail dress so you see what I mean and the sleeves right here they're gonna be very special and crazy and I actually filmed the pattern making part so I'm gonna put that right here So we are going to fit this dress on me, Dennis already started doing one side and we're gonna do the other side on camera with you guys so that you can actually see how an actual fitting with another person works um, instead of just me, you know, like doing it on myself, it's like not really what you should do. Um, so I hope you enjoy this one of a kind video, let's go. So as you can see right here, this part right here is a bit too big. My hip actually doesn't do that big of a curve <laughs> and we're gonna take a little bit out here. This is already done and then uh, just a few other tweaks that we have to do. So, Let's go. Dennis notice. So by the way, if you want to figure out how your shoulder pads lay, you always want to fold it in half. It's basically the same for your uh, sleeve as well and the smaller part is the front and the bigger part is the back or the um, steeper part is the front and the less steep part is the back. So that's how you figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> So usually the shoulder pad is fixed in four different spots, like right here, then here on the shoulder point and in the front and the back. If you are working with like on a blazer or something like that, you would actually sew it into the armhole. But since this is a dress and it's not going to be lined, I have to figure the shoulder pad situation out anyways. I'm thinking about just getting the lined version, like black lined shoulder pads. So that will be the solution, I guess, and then you won't be able to see like the insides and stuff. Willst du ein bisschen erklären, was du machst? Kannst du auch falsch, wenn ich Titel ist? Ja, natürlich kann ich immer bloß irgendwie die Stecker einfach mal das weg, was zu viel ist. Also im Grunde genommen machen wir es nur enger, weil der Stoff auch ein bisschen Stretch hat. Und, äh, 3%. 3%, das, was sie sagt. Und mehr ist es nicht, Kinder. Kriegt das einen Schlitz? Nee. Das ist aber zu weit wahrscheinlich, ne? Kannst du noch. Äh, nee, ich bin gerade ehrlich gesagt am Überlegen. Das, das ist halt eh stretch. Ich nicht. Ja, okay. Schlitz kann ich immer hinzufügen. Das ist gar kein Stress. Ich habe ja eh die Abnähernaht. Die liegt ganz gut, gell, die Abnähernaht? Ja. Die habe ich ähm, im Schnitt nämlich jetzt mal weiter rausgesetzt als normal. Ich weiß halt hier gerade ehrlich gesagt nicht, ob ich das hier so komplett... Also wirst du so richtig tight? Ja, schon tight, aber jetzt nicht tight tight. Weil dann kann hier eine ganze Menge raus. Okay. Das in so einem Magenta? Wäre auch geil. Ja, kann ich mir auch vorstellen. So wäre es aber tatsächlich auch super schön. Einfach als Goblet. Ja, genau. Finde ich tatsächlich toll. Also auch so, so. if you'd like to have this pattern, just... Leave out the sleeves and this is what it looks like. <laughs> Man muss nur die ähm, Schulterkreuzer. Ja, ja, das muss du nicht. Genau. Oh, das weißt du, was toll wäre? Das hole ich dir. Ein Stuhl mit Rollen und, und, und <laughs> so ein Arztstuhl. Yeah. <laughs> oh Gott, <laughs> dieses Geräusch. <laughs> Möchten Sie Ihren Boden zerstören? <laughs> Na klar. Ja, bitte. Das ist jetzt so ein ganz schöner Fit eigentlich, weil das ist, wie gesagt, das ist eng, aber es ist nicht zu eng. Mhm. Und wenn das hier alles nochmal komplett geschlossen ist, wird es ja auch nochmal enger sitzen. Jetzt ja. Willst du hier mal einen Kreis hinzeichnen? Ja. Zeichne einfach mal das, was da ist, zeichne das einfach mal hier drauf. Dann kann man ja immer noch entscheiden, ob man es macht oder nicht. 
Ich weiß auch gar nicht, ob das vom Schnitt, vom, ähm, vom Stoff her funktioniert. Mhm. Ja, das war nämlich meine Sorge, ehrlich gesagt. Und viele Leute haben auch auf Insta, by the way, follow me on Insta if you haven't already, I'm doing loads of polls and stuff like that. Um, follow him as well, shout out. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. Um, because I did a poll uh, on the dress and then people already told me I don't like the cutout. This is the drawing, by the way. Um, if you haven't... Where is the camera? Here. If you haven't seen it, focus on it. <laughs> If you haven't seen it already, that's the dress that I drew. Um, and people already told me I love the sleeves and stuff, but don't do the cutout. And if you want to be part of stuff like that, design process wise and so on, follow me on my socials. Thank you very much. Ganz jetzt ist besser. Auf jeden Fall. Von, also vom Look her ist es jetzt ähnlicher. Ich blend mal. I'll put a picture over Dennis so that you don't have to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> so that you can compare the design. Anyways, my time takes. Ich finde es ist zu groß. Also ich, ich bin ganz ehrlich, ich würde dir voll davon abraten. Gut. Ich glaube auch, dass der dass die Stoffkombination Probleme geben wird. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful. Ja. Oh, ja, toll. <lacht> toll, toll, toll. Toll, toll, ja. Toll, ja. Do you ever look at someone and wonder, what is going on inside their head? Ja! Ja, ey, oh, mit dem Hals sieht es viel, viel besser aus. Gehen wir zurück. Oder? Jo, das wird hübsch. Jo. Gut. Super. All the changes are done. I'm gonna see you when the whole pattern is finished. Cut out. Interfacing ironed on and we're ready to start sewing. Say bye, Dennis! Bye! Bye! <laughs> we're gonna start off with sewing in all the darts, both in the front and in the back. Just fold right sides together and use pins to match up the legs of each dart. To iron the darts, I'm using my tailor's hem that I made from scrap fabric a while ago. If you're interested, I also have a video on that linked in the eye right now. Iron the front waist darts towards the side seam and the bust darts upwards. The back darts all get ironed towards the center back. The sleeves are going to get a piped slit at the cuff, which we're going to start with. Cut the fabric right at the indicated slit line. To sew the piped version of a slit, you're going to need another pattern piece, which is called the sleeve slit piping. I like to prepare this by ironing it in half and then ironing one side of the piece towards the center fold line as well. Now you want to put your sleeve wrong sides facing up. The prepared piping gets pinned onto the slit legs with all the folding and stuff you just prepared facing up as well. This is gonna get folded over once attached to the sleeve. Pin the piping to sew at five millimeter seam allowance. Once you reach the end of the slit, go down to one millimeter seam allowance and back to five on the other sleeve leg. It's super important to work neatly here and to take your time in preparing the slip piping as mistakes will be rather visible in the end. Tulle actually is a really nice fabric to work with here because it doesn't fray and 1mm seam allowance usually isn't the easiest to handle. Now you can fold the piping over to cover the stitches you just did. This is also your last chance to kind of fix any issues at the top of the slit at the 1mm seam allowance if there are any things to fix. Top stitch the piping down right next to the folded edge. Okay. 
Iron the slit opening towards the back of the sleeve. Now, once we put the piping right on top of each other, they should match up and make a nice and even slit in the sleeve without any folds at the very top. Once the slit is in place, I continue with the shape of the sleeve. The upper part of the sleeve gets two elastics sewn in to create this puffy shape of the sleeves. I added some measurements for you onto the pattern, but it's always best practice to measure yourself as every body shape is unique. Find the notches at the sleeve side seams and stretch your elastic while sewing it in place. To sew the sleeve side seams together, I opted for French seams as the tool is transparent. But as tool also doesn't fray, you can just put right sides together and sew the seam shut as per usual and cut down your seam allowance to 5mm. To make French seams, I folded wrong sides together and sewed at 5mm, then turned the sleeves wrong sides out and sewed again at 5mm to encapsulate the raw edges of the previous seam. This leaves me with a finished seam inside and out. After a little Fuji padding break, it's time to sew the cuffs in place. To do that, I first sewed a gathering stitch into the hem of the sleeves. While at it, I also added another gathering stitch to the sleeve cap, starting at the front sleeve notch and ending in the back one. I found that one gathering seam is actually enough for a tool. Usually I'd suggest to sew two closely to each other into the seam allowance, as it just gathers nicer. I'm now able to gather the hem of the sleeve to the length of the cuffs. By the way, the cuffs are made for button loops and not buttonholes, so if you want to make normal shirt cuffs with buttonholes, I'd suggest to add two centimeters to the length of the cuffs for that. To prepare said cuffs, I like to iron the cuffs in half first and then the seam allowance of one side up into the cuff as well. To sew, I then fold right sides together and stitch the shorter sides of the cuffs together until the fold of the ironed up seam allowance. This is actually the time to place the button loops in between the two sides of the cuffs, which I totally forgot here, so please see the graphic on screen for help if you're not sure where to place the loops. I ended up fixing this once the cuffs were already in place, but I'm going to tell you how I did that and why I actually found this easier in just a minute. Cut down the seam allowance to around 5mm and turn the cuffs right sides out. I like to use a tool to pop out the edges. Go ahead and iron the cuffs to sew them onto the sleeves. Pin the non-iron side of the cuffs to the wrong side of the sleeve and sew them together. Then iron the seam allowance into the cuff and turn it up and over the stitching line. Pin down the prepared seam allowance to just cover the seam. Top stitch the cuff down right next to the fold. Now is probably a good time to tell you how I fixed the button loop issue. I actually ended up just opening the shorter sides of the cuffs that face the back of the sleeves and put my elastic loops into the seam. I top stitched it back close while making sure to actually stitch into the elastic to prevent it from just coming back right out. I like this method a lot as I was able to see where I'm placing the loops instead of adding them blindly to the inside before. I had to add a row of top stitches all around but that was no problem for me at all. So now I'm sewing the shoulder seams which I'm just doing by putting right sides of back and front shoulders together. I also overlock the seam and iron it towards the back. So when sewing the collar, my head was kind of everywhere and I forgot that I need to add a zipper also to the collar part of the center back, which is why it doesn't really look all neat and tidy at some point, but I'm going to talk you through it. Take the inner collar and iron the seam allowance of the neck seam upwards. The inner collar, I by mistake did the outer collar, but as I said, my head was kind of everywhere. And then you want to sew the upper side of your collars together, just the upper side, not the center back. I did that by mistake, as I said, and I will open up the center back in the very end. So just do the upper corner. Then you want to iron the seam allowance towards the inner collar so that the ditch is facing the inner collar and you're not able to see it from the outside. 
Now you can put right sides of the collar and the neckline together. So the non-iron side of the collar, which is the outer collar, together with the right side of the dress. Iron the seam allowance into the collar as per usual. So on screen I did the mistake again as I was talking about before. I put the inner collar to the wrong side of the dress, which is not right. So do it correctly outer collar with the right side of the dress and then just sew as per usual and as you can see I already opened the smaller the shorter sides to be able to put the zipper in. Which is the next step so I pinned the inseam zipper in place with the plastic stopper being right at the fold on the very top of the collar. I used a 55 centimeter zipper here but I'd suggest a 60 centimeter one as I also wrote in the material list of the pattern which is of course linked in the description and the pinned comment as per usual. I'm using my inseam zipper foot for these types of works as per usual which is a very helpful foot for zippers obviously <laughs> so here i'm just checking uh, if everything lines up and looks good from the outside so this is something i just like to do in between steps just to make sure that everything looks fine the next step is to match up the other side of the zipper with the just sewn in side of the zipper i like to use pins to mark specific points in my seam for example, the dividing seam at the neck or all of the notches that I have in my pattern and then I can just use the pins to line everything up nice and neatly. And this really, really helps me to match up my zippers perfectly, even though I didn't do a good job in this dress, but I was already, I was done <laughs> with all of the mistakes that happened at that, like at that project at that time. So I just left it as it was. It wasn't too big of a deal and it, you can't really see it as it's right behind your head, like at the very top of your neck where my hair usually is over. So mistakes happened, <laughs> but we're fine, we're moving on. To finish up the collar, I fold the center back right sides down onto the zipper band and sew it together until the fold line on both sides of the zipper. Once I pop out that edge, it's a nice finish and it also allows me to finish the inside edge of that collar, which is still open but already prepared and folded upwards, so it's a really really nice and easy finish. Now I can pin the open edge to just cover the stitches of the neckline and sew the collar close by top stitching from the outside of the dress. You always want to have the side that is visible facing up when adding top stitches like that as if there were any mistakes they would be on the inside and not too much to worry about. Now it's time to close the remaining center back seam at the bottom of the dress, which is the easiest if you iron the zipper seam first, and then continue the fold a bit further down to mark where to stitch in a second to get the best possible result. I overlocked the seam as well and ironed it towards one of the two sides. The dress is almost done, so now I'm finally closing the side seams. This could have been done already, but it doesn't really matter when you close the side seam. I'm also overlocking the seam and iron the seam allowance towards the back. To hem the dress, I included a 4cm wide hem facing into the pattern, which is marked with notches in the side seams. I am now using those notches to fold the facing onto the wrong side of the dress and iron it. I also overlock the raw hem before continuing. 
As I didn't want any visible stitches on the outside, I used hem tape to glue the fabric in place. This is a special tape that is washer safe and usually used in suit pants. As an alternative, you can also do a blind stitch to hem the dress or just add a row of top stitches. Any method of hemming is fine to be honest and is just a matter of preference and design. And lastly, it's time to add the sleeves. Put right sides of sleeve and armhole together and align all notches. Use the gathering stitch to gather the sleeve cap to fit the armhole of the dress. I sewed it in place and overlock the seam afterwards. To finish the dress, I added the shoulder pads. As I only had the unlined version, I cut out the shape of the shoulder pads out of some scraps of my fabric of the dress and kind of lined it myself by hand. I then fixed the shoulder pads loosely in place at four different spots. The shoulder point, the front and the back sleeve points, and the shoulder seam next to the neckline. I repeated this at the other shoulder as well. And that's it already, the dress is done. I am so in love with the dress, I can't even tell you. I wanna make this in like so many colors now because as you might know, black is not my preferred color, but that's just what I had laying around. So that's that, I am super happy with how it turned out. And I just quickly wanted to say thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing down below and ringing the bell to get notified every time that I post. I post on Sunday so you can keep an eye out for that and if you haven't already I already mentioned it during the video but follow me on my socials especially on my Instagram if you want to be part of the whole design process because I like ask you guys questions about it all the time or I you know uh, want to know what you want to see me do next and I do polls and stuff like that on my insta stories as well next to like all of the behind the scenes stuff and you know like content just from my life and stuff like that so Lots of interesting things that you might want to check out as well. Links for all of that are down in the description below. If you want to have this pattern, you can also get it down below on my Etsy store. That's actually the most direct way to support me and like my YouTube channel and everything like that because it takes a lot of time to make these types of videos and to figure everything out and to you know prepare this pattern in the way that I'm doing right now and so on and so forth. So if you want to see more like that and keep my channel and my business and everything going check it out down below and support me over there thank you so so much and of course i'm going to show you how the dress looks like worn in just a second i just quickly wanted to say thank you so much for watching again and i'm gonna see you next sunday bye guys